Before we start, if you need a refresh on deflection shooting, you can see either of these four videos. Um, this video is going to cover how to get in position and not how to aim. When attacking targets, you're going to either perform a snapshot or a tracking shot. In a snapshot, you're going to be flying straight and firing at the bomber's projected flight path, which will result in a brief moment where your rounds will hit. And a tracking shot is when you're firing while in a turn and maintaining the proper lead. This allows you to fire as long as you can hold the required lead. So as the turn progresses, the angle off decreases, making it easy to shoot and be shot at by the gunners. In the first video, we're going to be covering the stern approach and side approaches taken from this Air Force manual on fighter gunnery, which has been supplied by Sundowner and it's available for download in the video description. So the stern approach is the easiest one out of all of these. Um, essentially, it just has you sitting at the bottom at 6 o'clock and uh, while you're trying to close the distance to be in range for a shot, you're essentially trying to weave and change your direction just to avoid the bomber's gunfire as it's coming back towards you. Um, but the problem with this is that you'll be exposing yourself for a shot once you're trying to shoot because you've got to stay stable. So even though I can avoid the gunfire right now just by weaving around, once I try and keep my sight steady on the target, that's going to expose me to start getting shot at in return by the bomber. Here you can see I'm starting to take some hits as I'm just trying to destroy the bomber altogether. And uh, I've put him on fire, but this is kind of the cost of damaging my engine to the point where I'm essentially out of action. The side approach always starts in the same approximate position. You're going to be at either the target's 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock, with over 1 mile horizontal separation and above the target's altitude. But how you finish the approach to attack the target ends up being different. The attack itself was always going to look like an S-shaped turn, but it will finish at different altitudes to attack using either a snapshot or a tracking shot. If you're attacking from the same altitude, that'll be a flat side approach. If it's from a higher altitude, it'll be the high side approach. And if it's from a lower altitude, it'll be a low side approach. So this is we're going to do a flat side approach with a snapshot. And I'm going to accelerate and get towards the bomber's 10 o'clock position. And then I'll initiate that S turn towards the bomber. And then I'll take a snapshot. So from here, I'm in a good position. So I'm going to start the turn now. I'm going to have it slightly nose low. Uh, so we're going to lose a little bit of altitude here, but not too much. We're just trying to gain some speed. Then we can begin a lead turn before we pass the target's wing line. Then we start increasing the max power and flying towards the projected flight path of the bomber. Start firing. we will pass through the rounds and he gets hit. Then you can break away down away from the bomber and set up for another pass if you need to. So with the flat side approach, the goal is to arrive at a desired angle off, whether it's high or low level the target inside of around 1200 feet. For your starting position, it's as we've already talked about, but we're going to have around 1000 to 1500 feet of altitude advantage initially. So when you're ready to start, you'll turn towards the target in a gradual dive to increase that airspeed. Then we initiate the lead turn before passing the target's wing line and holding that lead pursuit to close the range. Then we'll arrive in firing position and start firing. Because the attack is flat, you tend to not see as much above or below the target, but you can use this approach if your airspeed advantage isn't very high. So for this example, we're going to be doing a high side approach with a snapshot. And uh, just like before, we're starting in the same approximate position. And we're going to try and get to that 10 o'clock spot. Uh, we're going to be also around 2,000 feet higher than the bomber. So around the position now, we can initiate a nose high turn towards the bomber, start adding full power. And then as we start the climb, we're going to gain the altitude. I'm going to do our best to maintain sight of the bomb as we level off. So we keep in front of our wing here. Then we can initiate the lead turn and begin to dive down onto the bomber, fly where he's going, and just fire, let the rounds pass through. Then you can use your airspeed um, to extend and create another attack opportunity. So the goal of the high side approach is the same. Uh, we want to arrive at a desired angle off, but we'll be diving on the target this time inside of around 1200 feet. The starting position is going to be the same but with a 2,000 foot altitude advantage. So then we can enter that nose high turn towards the target. We initiate the lead turn while maintaining sight before passing his wing line. And we hold lead pursuit to close the range. Then we can arrive in firing position and begin our shooting. Just remember not to lower your nose too early or else you'll end up with a flat side approach. So here we're going to do a high side approach again, but this time it will be with a tracking shot. So we're starting off from the same position at the bomber's 10 o'clock with 2,000 foot altitude advantage. So we can initiate that nose high turn now and begin our climb. 
We want a bit of an altitude advantage here because we want to be able to dive down onto the bomber. And do our best to maintain sight as we initiate that lead turn and pull it in lead pursuit. Now just like getting towards the angle off and the lead we need, we start firing and pull, hold it there, and then we could roll off if we needed to, but in this case he happened to explode. So we'll see that the advantage you have with a tracking shot is that although you may start with a high angle off, as you start pulling through and following the bandit, you're actually going to be firing for a longer period of time. And so this is going to increase your chances of hitting because as you start falling in behind the bomber, it's actually going to be reducing the angle off the whole time. So you're going to require less and less lead as you progress through the turn and close in for the kill. So you see that my initial rounds didn't hit, but as I progressed through the turn, more and more rounds started hitting and it was enough to destroy the bomber completely. So this example is going to be a low side approach with a tracking shot. And in this one, it's the same position, but we have around about a thousand foot of altitude advantage. So when we're ready, we can initiate a nose low turn towards the bomber. We're trying to lose the altitude here and gain some airspeed because this way we're going to have the energy to begin a climb and attack from underneath the bomber. And again, we're going to initiate a lead turn before we cross the target's wing line. You're going to pull up into a climb, it'll be around 20 to 30 degrees or so. You can pull into around lead pursuit and start firing, tracking the target, and then we can roll to inverted. We pull down and dive away after the pass, and then we can look back at the bomber and evaluate what we've done. In a low side approach, you're going to arrive at your desired angle off, but climbing at the target inside of 1200 feet. Starting position is going to be the same, but with 1000 feet of altitude advantage. And then when you're ready, you begin that nose low turn towards the target to begin to dive, and you'll initiate that lead turn before passing the wing line and holding lead pursuit. And as you climb up towards the target with the excess energy, you'll be in around a 20 to 30 degree climb. This will put you in position to shoot. If you're climbing past the target, this could make it easy for the gunners to hit you. So you should instead continue the turn and roll to dive away from the bomber when you're finished. So from this point of view, uh, we can really see the S shape that these side approaches take. Um, and then as I turn towards the bomber here, get that nose down low so we can make sure we lose that altitude and convert it into airspeed. This way we have enough energy, so as we reverse and come back towards the bomber, we can initiate that climb and still maintain good closure. And then once we're at that right angle off, we start firing and trying to hold that lead, and reducing it slightly as the angle off decreases. Then we can pull, invert it, and get away from the bomber if he's uh, still alive. So another low side approach here, but this one is going to be with a snapshot. So it's the same position, but with that 1,000 feet altitude advantage. And we can initiate the nose low turn towards the bomber now. So we'll start increasing our airspeed. And keep the reticule in front of the bomber to make sure we can hold that lead pursuit. So then we can initiate the lead turn and start climbing towards the bomber. Aiming the reticule where he's going to be and start firing. Let him pass through the rounds. Then we can unload and roll away from the bomber and reset for another pass if you want. So here we see as I make that turn towards the bomber, getting that nose nice and low. This way we make sure we have that good amount of airspeed to come in with a good closure. Because we're just trying to get a snapshot here, so we're just trying to point in front of the bomber where he's going. Just fire, let him pass through the rounds. And as we unload and roll, we're trying to extend and get away with that separation as fast as possible. So we're going to have a look at a few errors now you can make when doing these approaches. Uh, first one here is going to be by turning too tight initially. So I'm in position, I'm just going to pull really hard, almost to the blackout. This results in too much separation before you need to begin that lead turn. So even if you were to perform that lead turn correctly, you wouldn't be able to see the bomber. And you'd end up um, having to abort the parcel together. So you end up being stuck in lag to maintain sight. And you end up stuck uh, behind the bomber at a long distance. So here in this external view, you can get a nice uh, perspective on how your S shape of this approach ends up being kind of skewed by turning too tightly initially. You know, these side approaches should have a nice S turn to them, um, but we can see that the last half of this S here is going to be very elongated. So this ends up having the effect of putting us behind the bomber and we've ended up being outside effective guns range. So on this side approach, we're going to make a mistake by performing our lead turn too late. So we've done a good turn here, turning towards the bomber. 
However, we've allowed the nose to start drifting behind the target. So as we end up trying to roll and initiate the lead turn, we can't pull enough G for that turn. So we end up having to pull a lot more G on the back side of this turn. And that has the effect of putting us behind the bomber instead, outside of effective guns range. This is a good example of um, why it's important to be able to perform these lead turns correctly because doing so will require practice and good judgment. Here we'll see, as we initiate this turn, it's pretty good, but we allow the nose to drift behind the bomber, and so there's not enough horizontal separation for this turn on the backside. So what ends up happening is you end up pulling a lot of G, trying to make up for it, and you end up overshooting behind the target's flight path because there's not enough room, and you'll be stuck in the stern position behind the bomber, often outside of gun's range. So the last side approach error we're going to look at is on the high side approach and the effect of lowering your nose too early after you initiate the climb. So here we start our climb, adding that full power. We're going to gain that altitude which we need to dive down onto the bomber and as we're maintaining sight, we end up lowering the nose too early. So by lowering the nose too early, we're giving up the altitude we've gained and we end up just converting it back into airspeed and with the extra distance between us and the bomber, this has the effect of reducing our final altitude to end up converting this high side approach into a regular flat side approach. And here in this external view, you'll have a good perspective of how lowering your nose too early during the high side approach effectively cancels out your altitude advantage and making it into a side approach. So if you enjoyed this video, you can become a subscriber by clicking that subscribe button. And if you really enjoy the content that I'm making, you can support my Patreon, which the link is in the description. Until next time though, remember to fly safe and check your six.